heard me throughout the day make references to a Zimbabwean boy who is in care, who is currently holed up in the Zimbabwe embassy in London. Um, as Maggie rightly says, he's actually Desmond Tutu's grandson. The boy and his mother have been in the embassy, living there in one small room since the 5th of April. And basically what happened in that situation is that the boy, who was in a mental hospital, having been sectioned, um, was taken to the Royal Courts of Justice by two support workers from the mental hospital and he was due to attend a hearing uh, before Mr Justice MacDonald on the 5th of April. When he got to court, he thought, I've had enough of this, 11 months, I've been going through the court system, I don't believe they're listening to me, I don't believe I can get justice, so what he decided to do was leg it. And he ran out of the Royal Courts of Justice, he went down the Strand, he stopped a passerby, he had no mobile phone because he'd been, all of that had been taken off of him. He stopped a passerby outside the Zimbabwe embassy and said, please can I phone my mum? So he rang his mum and said, I'm going into the embassy to seek refuge and to get help. So that's what he did. He went into the embassy to seek refuge and to get help. And his mother followed him into the embassy and there they remain. Um, both the mother and the son are whistleblowers. Both of them have done, they're not British. Um, in fact, the mother claims and has claimed <coughs> throughout that there is no jurisdiction for uh, anything to be done in relation to her son, that he shouldn't be in care, <coughs> that there's no jurisdiction for the courts, uh, but they can't seem to get anybody to listen to them. Um, the courts consistently say, under Article 6.2 of the Hague Convention 1996, we've got jurisdiction. Um, they say that the boy, who was a tourist in London last year, um, was not habitually <coughs> resident anywhere wh when he was. So um, the, pair, the, the mother claims that he's therefore been illegally in care and legally going through the court system at great public expense uh, without any jurisdiction. So that in itself is a problem. The, they also claim that the, thre the threshold hasn't been met either. But what this couple have done, because they're both whistleblowers, and they've been trying to expose what's been going on in the court system since they've been here in the U UK. So what they've done, or a relative has done, is set up a website to help everybody in this country going through the family court system. And the website is not in this jurisdiction. It's overseas, and it's got documents and videos um, and evidence as to what goes on in the court system over here that any of you can use in your own court cases, in your own court actions. The website address, if you'd like to take it down, I'll give you an illustration of the sort of things that are on it, um, but the website address is www.foreignkidssnatchedbyuk.com foreignkidssnatchedbyuk.com and I'll, if I just quote from an email that the mother sent to me two days ago um, <coughs> she wrote, Dear Yolandi, thank you very much for your great effort and then uh, she was copying something in that I'd <coughs> written to the Supreme Court. I'll explain what that is in a moment. But she says, we had to let go of our legal aid solicitors because they were representing the interests of the establishment instead of our interests. <laughs> and the evidence of this, four sets of solicitors and barristers that the mother had, she had to let them all go. And the boy had to do the same. In fact, the boy, who's 16, tried to sack his solicitor three times, but the judge refused to let him sack his own solicitor. Um, but the situation um, progressed yesterday in that there was a hearing yesterday to discuss whether the boy 
could sack his solicitor, amongst other things, and whether he could go home. He wants to go home, he doesn't want to be a burden to the taxpayer, he wants to leave the country as soon as possible and go home to Zimbabwe. Anyway, there was a hearing yesterday afternoon uh, via video link from the Royal Courts of Justice, Mr Justice MacDonald, to the Zimbabwe Embassy, where the boy was speaking to the judge. And the boy um, has recorded the hearing. So we've got a good video of Mr Justice MacDonald in action, the boy's social worker, the boy's social worker manager, the solicitor that he's been trying to sack, the barrister that he's been trying to sack, all there in the court. And on this website we have we have that video of what happened in the court yesterday. Now the boy thought, okay, um, it was Mr Justice Cobb last year who said the boy should have his own solicitor because there was a conflict of interest with the Kafka solicitor. So they said, right, the boy should have his own solicitor. Yesterday, his own solicitor um, and barrister stood up in court and said to Mr Justice MacDonald that now we're stepping down, you should have... Um, he should go back to the Kafka solicitor. So that's what the judge ordered. Yeah? No, it's not. And what actually happened was John Hemming, who has been helping in this case um, all this week, had actually uh, written to the judge the day before, yesterday, and put his CV in to be the boy's Mackenzie friend. But he was rejected. Yeah? John Hemming, John Hemming was rejected. And this was after John Hemming uh, had on Monday been in the media twice in regard to this case. He was being interviewed on Good Morning Breakfast on Monday morning in relation to this other high-profile celebrity whose name we're not allowed to know, but we all know who it is. And in relation to being interviewed about this other celebrity, he then brought in the Tutu case and said, oh, there's another case going on that's very similar to this because the boy and his mother have got a celebrity media injunction on them. Uh, not only have they got a celebrity media injunction on them, they've got, the mother's got a document restriction order on her. She's not allowed to know anything that's going on in the court proceedings. Um, and that, that um, is, is what's going on. So in the morning, we had John Hemming linking the high-profile um, case involving the celebrity that we all know. Which isn't Tom Jones. No. But he's another one. It's not Tom Jones, no. I, I know it is, but I mean, I'm not going to say it on, on this thing. But uh, basically, he, he did link the two cases and said there's, there's somebody doing a, a Julian Assange in the Zimbabwe embassy. And then later on in the day... He went on to uh, BBC Radio Ulster and said more about the situation, linked the two cases again, and um, spoke about public money being wasted and it being in the public interest to know what's been going on in this case because of the basic situation. Many horrific things have happened. Uh, the boy last August uh, ended up in hospital after his drink was spiked. He was then moved from Suffolk to a children's home in Barking, where he got, he got stabbed. Uh, we went out for the day with somebody in the children's home and he got stabbed. His aunt, who is a psychiatric nurse in um, Zimbabwe, became very concerned. A month later, he was showing signs of PTSD. So pleading, 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 the family were, with a local authority, please, please get this boy help. He's showing all the signs of, of this. What do they do? Ignore it, ignore it, ignore it. Breach of duty of care. Yeah? Breach of duty of care. So this went on and on and on until the 4th of February when he got sectioned, um, largely on the directions of the Director of Social Services. <coughs> So um, he got sectioned, and whilst he was being sectioned, uh, and he was never, ever treated for PTSD. In fact, they diagnosed something completely different. Yeah? 
so I mean that that's a bit of the bottom line of, of what but also he was they were trying to say that he was gay his solicitor was trying to say to him oh tell them that you're gay you know and things like that and he's he's alleging that his social worker was saying the same thing so th there's a lot of stuff that's been going on I mean there isn't time for me to tell you all of it um, because it's such a big story but I can tell you that on Thursday morning, when they were hearing this celebrity media in injunction situation, I did write to the Supreme Court on behalf of the boy and his mother. Um, I followed up what John Hemming had done on Monday. So I, I used it as an opportunity to um, deal with other issues and things that, that could help other people. So... I wrote, um, urgent, celebrity media restriction orders, PJS and Desmond Tutu. And you can get a copy of this on that website I told you about. Please can this email be placed before the law laws here in the above PJS case at 9.30 today. In the media, the PJS <laughs> case being heard this morning has been linked to the case of Desmond Tutu's grandson. Please see emailed yesterday morning to all London borough of X, <laughs> C. Terence, uh, councillors, <laughs> etc. Um, I've been a Mackenzie friend to, to Dr. Whatever since last July and out of necessity to her son too, ever since he ran away from a Royal Courts of Justice hearing before Mr. Justice MacDonald on the 5th of April 2016 to seek refuge in the Zimbabwe Embassy, where he was joined by his mother. They've been living there ever since. I'm the person interviewing both Dr. Watson and her son in the two Skype videos, links on the website. There's four videos that you can use on that website. Two of them are me interviewing the mother and the son, and two of them are the mother and I speaking in depth about all, the, all, all that's been going on in all the court cases. So busting the whole thing wide open. Is that to include that letter as well they can read? Yeah, that's on, oh, that's on there. We've got to close at six. Okay. Sorry, we've okay. run behind an hour all day. Can, can, can I just read what the, the, this morning when the, the conference was going on, I was texting the boy and I, I let him know what was going on here and I said to him, have you got a message that you'd like to give to the audience here today, and so I'm now going to read you his words. And his words were, please help me and my mum get out of this country. And then 20 minutes later, he said, please, we're really depressed today, we need uplifting. So I urge you all to go on the website, you can message them from there. This needs to come out. This, th 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 what is in this document you need to read that's on the internet, because like, like the other case is coming out because two million people know about it, we need that sort of thing because these people are whistleblowers, they've done it, they're not from this country, they've been treated appallingly and illegally, he's in care illegally and they're still trying to, <coughs> they're telling him now that unless he gets himself psychiatrically assessed he's not allowed to leave the country and they're saying the mother is at risk of prison because there's a collections order that she's in breach of because she won't push him out the embassy to go back into a mental hospital to be abused.